We've been doing some fossil polishing today after the fossil walk. I'm going to show you a bit more on these fossils. I'm spraying these fossils with water so you can see the calcite colours come up and it shows the chambers which the creature filled with water or gas. They're filled with calcite that's preserved in the middle of the ammonite. Here's the diamond saw that I use a block with to cut the little ammonites in half so you can see the internal structure of the ammonite. Now I'm going to do some fossil grinding of these faces of the ammonite on this silicon carbide paper. First is 100 grit, that means there's 100 pieces of grit to one centimetre and it's very coarse. You can see the paste coming off there, that's the limestone rock as I wear it down. Now medium, that's medium grit, about 400 grit, 400 pieces of grit to one centimetre. You can see too that it slides a little bit better and also too it's making less of a grinding noise and I wash the fossil in between each stage to get contaminant off and then finally the fine stage that I'll go down to that's a really good stage to use because it's got a nice smooth feel to it across the surface and then finally a big scrub up with the toothbrush or a scrubbing brush to get any grit, any contaminant out of the chambers of the creature before buffing up on the felt wheel. I also to use the spray bottle to spray into the chambers to get calcite crystals out, the ones that will pit out anyway across the polishing surface and scratch all the surface again. I don't want that. Finally, the felt wheel. I pick up the polish in the middle, which is going quite slowly compared to the outside of the felt wheel, which is going fast. I then use the heat of the outside of the wheel to melt the surface of the uh, ammonite. Uh, that's a kind of glaze that I create across the surface there. The chambers of the creature, you can see the ammonite had to give it its buoyancy in the sea, a bit like a modern day flotation device, a bit like a submarine. And uh, there's the plastic model of an ammonite to show you the morphology of that ancient marine sea creature. So I'm just enjoyably doing a bit of fossil polishing after the fossil walkers have all gone home. And this is the final result, a lovely polished fossil there. You can see a sort of creamy coloured calcite. Well, you've probably been out fossil collecting yourselves at low tide along the Jurassic coast and you get some really beautiful golden ammonites, the ones preserved in iron pyrite. And I'm going to show you a few of these with mud in the middle that needs picking out. And then you'll achieve a perfect center by doing a bit of picking with a hardened steel pin or a little pin you've got to do the work with to get that mud or beef calcite material out of the center of the ammonite. That larger ammonite on the right, the bigger one there covered in pyrite, has got globs of pyrite in. That won't come out of that larger fossil Canocytes. Whereas look at this one, I focus on picking at the middle of the ammonite, going along the ribs, running along the ribs with the hardened steel pins so I don't break any of the ribs off and then just try and force the middle bit out and then run the pin around that circumference, the inner circumference of the ammonite, that whirl going around and in. And as I pick away, you can see more of the center start to emerge and a bit of a spray with a spray bottle. And you can see it's coming out really fine down to the center. That's the male of the species, Promicrocerus. That's not my brush at the moment. That's not my current toothbrush. Kids always fascinated whether I'm using my toothbrush or not when I'm scrubbing these ammonites to bring them up. Here's another little ammonite and you can see it's turned to limonite on the outside. The air has already got to that one so it's turned a slightly different colour there. I'm picking away again with the pin and achieved a lovely little centre of that fossil. A bit more scrubbing up, a bit of attrition with toothpaste too can abrade it nicely to get the center right out and uh, you'll see they come up very beautifully just for a little bit of work. Here's some work I did a while back to achieve a really nice polish on that Elminster ammonite, a really large one there. 
and uh, that was ploughed up in a field. That's the morphology of the ammonite again. It had a really sharp beak in between the tentacles the ammonite did, a bit like a parrot's beak, and that was used for grabbing small ichthyosaurs and fish, especially big ammonites. We found an Areotites bucklandi that was 65 centimetres across. You can imagine the parrot-like beak that particular one had, really quite a voracious predator from the Jurassic. 